Hi, I'm Mike. This is Our Wyoming Life, and today we're tackling the project list. And it's a lot on the project list today. We have three things that we're going to be getting done today. They all have to do with food and steers and cows and cake. So this is all stuff we've done in the past in a completely different way. Today, we're changing the whole rule book. We're gonna start right out here. These are our steers. These, this is what we call the A-team. Uh, these guys are gonna be ready for uh, freezer camp here in about a month or so. Um, they're gonna be going off processing and then they come right back to the ranch for sale on our website and in the farm store, which is located right over there. Up until now, uh, we've been giving them corn, oats, and barley, pretty much an equal ration of the three. And we've been doing it every single day in these things. These are lick barrels. Uh, we're basically using them for multi-purposes. Tricky part is though, there's a safety issue here and that has to do with the fact that when you come in here, they get really, really pushy. And because we're changing the entire business plan of the ranch and moving more towards a feedlot type operation, we like to call it uh, a finishing school, um, we are going to be changing how we feed these guys also. I mentioned it's kind of a safety thing, and Matt, a friend of mine, is out here taking care of these steers every single day. Matt has MS, which honestly, like getting in with the steers and stuff like that, um, could be a little tricky for him. He's got, uh, he hasn't been knocked down yet, but he has been hip checked and almost knocked down. So we decided it was time to kind of do something about this problem. So the A team is gonna get a whole new feeding system. So is the B team, which, are the steers that are a couple months behind. Matt's been feeding them too, but over the fence, which is a pain in the butt also. So this last weekend, I actually went to our local feed store and spent a little bit of money to try to make things a whole lot easier. And this is what we ended up with. We've got two feed bunks in here. We're gonna be utilizing those. But the big thing is these feedlot panels, which we're gonna be putting up in place of some panels on the air equip for the A team. And we're gonna be taking down some panels or some wood fence actually for the B team and putting these in its place. That's coming up. Also, we're gonna be taking a look at how we cake the cows and doing that in a whole new way because we've tried lots of different ways to cake the cows. I think this might be the final solution. So. Let's get started, and I think the best place to start is probably with the A-team. I'm gonna get Matt out here to give me a hand. We're gonna move some cows around and take off some panels. Hey, Matt. Hey, Mike. You ready to do this? Yeah. Do you I'm have a ready. plan? Basically, no. <laughs> it's the best way to do things. He'll help. All right, I'm gonna go grab the pickup, back it up over here so that we can have our materials okay. right here. I think what we'll end up doing is um, we need basically 12 feet of panel removed. So I think these are 10 foot panels. Um, okay. So we'll end up either removing one and stretching it out or removing two and making it smaller, one or the other, whatever seems to work the best. So okay. I'll go grab our materials. We'll get our stuff laid out here. And I'm thinking just right in line here might be the easiest way to do it. So we'll also have to move these guys because we're gonna be taking down panels and we don't want them running free. So they need to be back in that other corral side. So. I'll go get the pickup and then I'll give you a hand moving these guys. Sounds good. Come on. Let's go. So these are different types of panels than what we've got on here. So there's gonna be a little bit of a trick here on how we're gonna attach them, but first we're gonna take off our panels we don't need on the AeroQuip. And I'm also gonna show you the difference between these two panels. 
We're gonna leave the panel next to the gate. I think we need to keep that for structural stability. So we'll drop back here to this panel. The nice thing about these AeroQuip panels, and also the bad thing is they're heavy. So, good in that. So obviously a lot of cleanup to be done in this corral. Um, I'm gonna actually be working on that tomorrow. So if you watch the weekly vlog, you'll be able to see how we get in here and start cleaning this out. Matt will be out in the tractor tomorrow as well, but he's gonna be cleaning fields with the harrow. So exciting stuff. It is. There you go you can see the difference in the panels themselves these panels obviously have a, a slant to them this allows the steer to hit stick their head through and eat from the outside the old panels straight bars these ones they should be able to get their head through so the last thing we have to do is just wire this all together which is probably the easiest part so let's just knock that out really quick All right, now we're gonna run across the road and do the same thing for the B team. Well, not the same thing, a little different. A little different. But we're gonna go knock that out. So over here, this is what we call the B team, and this is where Matt does uh, the other half of his feeding, now that we're almost halfway through the whole project. The nice thing about this is that, obviously, it makes it safer for everybody involved, not only you, but, you know, we can have the kids come over sure. and, uh, and, and feed these guys without having to worry about getting run over or anything like that. Um, do you feel a little safer on the other side of the fence, you think? I do. Yeah. I do. You know, I don't think they realize how big they are. Um, yesterday, I got hip check i call it hip check by one of them on the cross street and wow it hurt number four didn't mean it no no she's nice or he's nice yeah he's nice all right so in here we've got these wooden troughs we're gonna have to take these out and then we're gonna have to cut down a small portion of this fence in order to make this fit now i'm pretty sure that this fence is probably not six foot on center for the post so we're gonna have to figure out a little bit different way to attach things and make sure everything's secure. But uh, just like we did across the road, first thing we have to do is get rid of these kids. So I'm gonna push, I'm gonna open up that gate. We're gonna push them down there into that holding area if that okay. works for you. Works for me. Okay. guys out of the way now we can get our panels out and get them set see where we line up
right, Matt, so that's two out of three projects for the day. Yeah. We've got the two bunks done. Now, these are strictly um, temporary mm -hmm. because we have bigger plans, and I'm going to share some of those with you. But I think it's time to test these out. Yeah. So why don't you run back and get uh, some COB. Okay. I'll let these guys loose. Okay. And I'll tell these guys about what our future plans are over here. And then when you get back, we'll see how it works. Sounds like a plan. All right. Be right back. So like I said, this is very temporary. And the main reason is because all of this, a lot of this over here, is going to be coming out. Um, we've got some big plans for this whole area here on the ranch. I'm going to get up just, well, maybe just a little bit higher so you guys can kind of see. So there's this barn here behind this barn and in front of the sheep pasture, what we used to call the sheep pasture or still call the sheep pasture, but there's no longer any sheep in it, is going to be our new RV park. That's going to be very cool. And you're going to watch that develop over the next month or so. We're going to get in some, get some dirt work done, some electrical work. And uh, that is where harvest host people are going to stay. They don't pay a dime to stay there and uh, just get a chance to hang out on the ranch, visit the farm store, get a tour, all kinds of cool, fun stuff. So Matt's going to run over and get some COB for these guys. So I guess uh, that won't take him very long. How many buckets do you do today? Our B team gets one. And A team gets three. All right, let's do two for these guys for today. Okay. Just for, uh, you know, it's a it's a big day. And there you're right. There you go. So another quick thing I wanted to show you guys was we have five steers in here. Um, these bunks are 12 feet long, and the basic rule of thumb is that you need two foot per animal in a feedlot feedlot type situation like this. So. Even though we have this post here, um, I think we'll be fine. We got one, two, maybe three, I don't know, four, five, and six slots there for them to get their head through. At least five, we've got five steers. I think we'll be safe that way, but we'll be able to tell here in just a second. So along with our RV park over on that side, um, RV parking, I can't say RV park because it's not an RV park, it's RV parking for friends of ours who happen to be Harvest Toast members or go to our website and book their spot. Um, we're also going to be changing up some of this that we did down here last year. Last year we took out all of this and I'll tell you why. It was because we were originally going to put our RV parking down in this area. The problem is that we've got about 16 foot of drop and in order to bring all this up and level would have cost a fortune. So we kind of changed our plans a little bit. So the RV parking moved over there. And now in this area is going to become our brand new feedlot. We're going to have a couple different pens here. Uh, we're going to incorporate AeroQuip's uh, portable chute down on the end. We're going to have scales. Really cool, fun stuff. All that is coming up here within the next month or so also. Lots of construction happening over on this side of the uh, of the highway. Um, we are going to be doing a lot of dirt work here. Hopefully, I'm, I think I'm going to rent a bulldozer actually and uh, do some dirt work here. We're going to kind of even this out a little bit, but we're going to keep a slope to it so we don't have to worry about bringing up that 16 foot all the way down there. All right, so for all this to happen, obviously, this is going to have to come all out. All of this fence here is going to come out. That fence on that other side is going to come out. The barn here will stay, but we're going to probably do a little modifications to that as well. So I got to get in here and let these guys out so that uh, Matt can bring them over some food here. I'm going to sneak in, maybe through this hole. Maybe not through this hole. <laughs> Apparently I put on a couple pounds here lately. All right, we're gonna climb over another way. <laughs> I guess we put all these feedlot panels in, we might as well use them to, to get in and out. That's actually pretty handy. Okay, so I'll run over here and let these guys out. Yeah. Everything's thawing over here, which is making one huge mess. 
Very disgusting. The little kids are over here investigating whatever the heck this thing is. What is this? They say, how does this work? And where did our feed trough go? We're just waiting for Matt to get back over here. And uh, to be quite honest, I mean, all this stuff that we've got going on, super expensive, number one, but really, um, you know, that is what it is. There's no way to get around that. But honestly, it, it is a little bit stressful. Um, so last year for Harvest Host, we had three spots. We're expanding that to five spots for Harvest Host this year. Um, all that has to be done by the middle of May. That's when we start getting RVs um, coming in. The feedlot, once we start on that, we have to finish that. Um, you know, it's just a lot of stuff happening all at once. A little bit stressful, but um, being able to do things like this and, and get these little projects done really, really do make a big difference. Coming up here, our next project and our last project for the day is one that I've been wanting to do for a long time. It's, it's been in the back of my mind, um, and it all has to do with caking the cows. Over the years, like I said earlier, we've tried many different ways to cake the cows. We, we obviously have our cake feeder. I love our cake feeder. It's a Stoll cake feeder. You can actually check them out at stollfeeders.com. Um, we've had it for years. Actually, it's our second one. We had a 200-pound feeder, and then I graduated up to the 600-pound feeder. Um, it's, it's wonderful, it's awesome to have. Um, we've used it on the back of the gator quite a few times. The problem is on the gator, you can't see anything. You lose the bed of your gator because the dang thing is so big. Um, I've never had one that goes in the pickup, which would be the next logical step, um, just because I've never needed one that big. Um, so the interesting thing is now we're trying a whole new way to do it that we've kind of tried before. We built a trailer that our cake feeder could ride on. Um, now we're trying it the way it's supposed to be done. Uh, Stull Feeders hooked us up with a Stull Feeder trailer that's made for their cake feeders. And uh, we're going to build that in just a few minutes here and get that hooked up to a four-wheeler and be able to use it. The really cool thing about it is that we'll also be able to use it with these bunks. Um, I'm hoping that with a couple modifications we can actually use it to feed the COB that we feed to these cows as well and make our lives a whole lot easier and uh, maybe a little bit more fun. So here comes Matt. Um, it looks like he has our COB, so let's see how it works. Moment of truth. I have no doubts they're gonna love it. Do your thing. The nice part is you can pull right up to it now. Hell, yeah. you could probably do it out the window if you really wanted to. Probably could. <laughs> well, it looks like somebody's uh, waiting for something here. two for two. You like want to make good. it three for three? Why not? Go for All right. gold. Let's head to the shop. We'll get started on our next project and the final one of the day and the one that I've really been looking the most forward to. Not that this isn't cool. I mean, this is good. This is a safety thing. Um, the cows, you know, they get cleaner feed this way, everything else. Um, but uh, our Something next... Something else I was thinking. Huh? When the harvest host with the families and kids come, if they want to help learn about feeding animals, Expose them to years. agriculture. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. And then, really, you're far enough away, you're not going to get hurt. No. So, meet us in the shop. We'll get started on our next project. We're down here in the shop. It's a beautiful day outside, and it kind of sucks to be stuck in the shop doing a project, but we've got to get this done. And today, we're going to be building a cake feeder trailer. So, let's take a look and see what we got. All right, here's the cake feeder, that's done. We've been using that for years, but it's time to open up the cake feeder trailer, which came in these two boxes. And uh, let's break them open and see what we got. Let's see. All right, um, we'll just lay everything out here on the floor and then we'll figure out what we got from there off. There you go. 
instructions. That's what it's going to look like, we hope. Hey, look at this. I got a sweatshirt. Stall feeders. Oh. Peaceful, easy feeding. Very cool. I tell you what, I'm going to do something here. Um, leave a comment in you know, below on this video and be a subscriber. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. And I'm going to pick a random comment. You're going to get this sweatshirt, unless you want it. No. We can call Josh. We can get more, I'm sure. All right, so one lucky commenter is going to get this sweatshirt. Stole feeder sweatshirt. That's a heavy sweatshirt, too. Check that out. Oh, that is heavy. That's a nice one. Yeah. All right, so this can be yours. Just leave a comment, a nice comment, and uh, we'll hook you up with that sweatshirt. All right, what else we got? Hey. This has some pretty beefy tires, too. Look at those. Nice. Tires are probably half the price of this thing. <clears throat> Alright, we're going to make this a whole lot easier on you guys because this thing does not look that hard to put together. We're going to time lapse the entire thing. You ready? I was born ready. <laughs> We've got a cake feeder on a trailer. Now we just yeah. need to get it power and hopefully everything takes off. It'll work. It'll work. You have faith in us. I do. <laughs> All right, Matt, <laughs> moment of truth. Hit the button. It works. Happening. Yeah, try it one more time. We'll see what's going on. Well, Matt, there's only one thing left to do. What's that? Cake the cows. Cake the cows. All right, let's Sounds grab a four-wheeler. We'll hook this thing up to a four-wheeler. It could go on the gator, but they it's actually better on a four-wheeler, they tell me, because um, you can actually see what you're doing, if that okay. makes sense. So we're gonna hook it up to a four-wheeler. We'll go put uh, 100 and some odd pounds of cake in it and uh, take it out and see what it does. There we go. Whoops. Oh, that came off. Uh oh. <laughs> Welder guy, there you go. Heavy. I need like a lifter on my on your ball. On my ball to bring it back up at level, but that's something we can deal with. Okay. And the other big thing is if I can reach the button while I'm riding. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good. I think that'll work just fine. So we have to figure out how to bring that ball up. But that's not the end of the world. That's the old. Probably a quick uh arbor freight. <laughs> Probably. Alright, let's run over to the uh, the cake. Grab some of that. Here's where our cake goes. And we're going to be putting in about 120 pounds of cake today.
All right, you want to close her up, Matt? Yep. Cool. This is your chute. That's where the cake's going to come out when we push the button. All right. You really have no idea how excited I am to be able to go out and cake the cows like this. Obviously, you've seen us uh, cake them by hand. We've caked them with the gator, uh, just throwing cake in the back of the gator, dumping it out. But honestly, like getting out and doing this is, uh, for me, it's it, you're a lot closer to the cows. And uh, I think that's a good thing. I'm gonna open this thing up. And here they come. Everything seems to be working okay. We'll figure out our our level issue and uh, what we can do there. But we are three for three. Yeah, very good day. Three new ways to feed cows: um, yep. bunks, feedlot panels, yep. and the new cake trailer, which I think I'm really going to like. I think I'm going to like this thing. Yeah. I think it's going to be uh, pretty handy to 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 use. I think you know there's a couple other modifications I'd like to make to it. I'd like to put a viewing window in it so we can see how much cake is in there how much we fed, um, but, uh, and then of course leveling it is gonna be a thing, getting that done. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. We appreciate you hanging out with us. Be sure to comment below. Um, make sure you subscribe to this channel and you can get a chance to win that Stoll Feeders sweatshirt that they were so nice to send me that I didn't even ask for. Thank you very much, Josh. We are happy to pass that along. And go check out stallfeeders.com. They've got some really cool stuff that uh, can definitely help out with feeding on your operation if you have cows, I guess I should say. Yeah. If you have kids, it might help too. So. It would help. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life. Say bye, Matt. Say bye, Matt. See you next time. Hey, 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 hey. Don't bend my thing. <laughs>